order. This is the meeting of the Northampton Public Works Commission. It is Wednesday, June 10th, 2015. This meeting is being recorded by the Northampton Community Television. Uh, first item on the agenda is public comment. Do we have any today? Sure. Oh, I'm not taking the summer off. <laughs> well, I took the last meeting off. Okay. Still trying to digest this administrative uh, readjustment that's happened here as to who's representing who and what authority they have to do what they have to do. I noticed that the city council has a DPW subcommittee now. And it's kind of hard to get any minutes on what they do. And I was wondering what the possibility of them meeting with this commission would be. Is there a duplication of effort? Are they recommending the same stuff? Are you rep you're representing the citizens? Are you representing the mayor? It's just kind of a whole bunch of questions about what the direction is of this body. All right, so that's one that's mm -hmm. on the docket. The other one is I was in here the other day and the, the roll-off truck was in the garage and there was a private contractor hauling the boxes. And my worthy advisor on trash transport said that that's the smart thing to do is to contract out to private haulers because they can do it a lot cheaper than we can do it by owning their own truck, maintaining their own truck, and stashing away money to buy the next truck. And I don't know if anybody's ever gone that route to see what the cost benefit would be to going back to private haulers or whether you still want to be in the hauling business, maintaining the truck, insuring the truck, maintaining and, haul, and private haulers coming in when the truck's out of action. And the other one is the water ban. So I reread the water ban today and it says we're in for the whole summer probably again, regardless of the water flow. And I still think there's big question marks about how the Mill River affects residents' water use because our watersheds don't drain into the Mill River. And I'd like to bring up the issue of Damon Road and the number of tractor trailers I see on Damon Road coming out of the industrial park with tens of thousands of gallons of our water that's leaving the watershed completely coming out of the coal plant. It seems as though we've been having water bans more frequently after the coal plant has expanded. So I don't know if there's a connection there or not, but I think citizens would like to have a better explanation of why the Mill River is the gauge for why I can't wash my car, can't mm -hmm. power wash my house. I go to Hadley and no other towns around here have water bands except us. That's my concerns for the week. Okay. Or the Thank month. You. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. We have the minutes first of the April 8th, 2015 Public Works Commission. Move approval. Second. I provided a couple of minor edits. I don't know if anyone else did. I wasn't at either one of those meetings, so I can't vote. Okay. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. The chair will vote aye, so that's three. One abstention. Yes, please. Motion passes. Next are the minutes of the May 13th, 2015 Board of Public Works, Public Works Commission meeting. And again, I provided a minor edit. Is there a motion to approve? So, second. Um, any other comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Abstain. Roll abstains. Motion passes. I see there's no new business on the agenda, so we'll go on to old business and the schedule for completing the comprehensive wastewater management plan. It's an item I know is on staff's mind and on my mind, so right. you want to address this, Ned? Sure. Um, I had a conversation with Dave Peterson from Client Culture today on this, of his past uh, work on doing this, bringing this to the public presentation and so on. And we talked about it for a bit and felt that the first thing that would be done is the subcommittee ought to come back and have a conversation with the entire commission itself and discuss 
their findings out of the, basically what Brown was doing was the capital plan, especially the five-year capital plan. Um, Peterson is willing to come, Mr. Peterson is willing to come in for that meeting also and discuss the comprehensive wastewater management plan and answer any questions that you have for him also. I spoke with the mayor at my last monthly meeting and he's requested that we have two public hearings on this, or two public meetings on it. Mm -hmm. uh, one downtown at uh, Council Chambers and one up at JFK School uh, to be recorded by NCTV. And um, I'm hoping that sometime in the fall that this will go into the NEPA process and we'll have this wrapped up. I guess the one big question is what do we want to present to the public? What's going to be out there? Is it a one, one executive summary of as I was talking with Jim today, 15 or 20 pages of information, and, and if people want to see the entire documents, those are located in the libraries, and perhaps a copy or two here for you know general reading. It's, it's going to be a stack about this high when we're done. Um, so those are things that we, we basically discussed about, and now it's a matter of how do we want to make this move forward working with the commission. Is the thought to take this to the public before the MEPA process starts? It has to go through, yes. It does. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so that's the point. Um, and was there any discussion about when these meetings would be scheduled? Not yet. Um, the mayor was kind of hesitant to have them late in the summer because everyone's on vacation and the reality is not everyone in the city is on vacation, but few people are. Uh, but if we have two and they're over a period of time, I think that gives ample opportunity for the public to come to either one. And it, it seemed to me that we ought to, the commission ought to deal with this issue first as a commission before we have these public meetings. There are three of us that have been on the subcommittee that are fairly familiar with it, but each time there's a gap between a meeting, we, we need to be refreshed mm -hmm. and Use those of you that weren't on the yeah. subcommittee really need to be oh, refreshed, mm -hmm. and that's for sure. Um, you know, we have a we have a July July meeting scheduled, but that's for the water um, report presentation. Not wastewater. And not wastewater. I mean, we certainly can't do both in the same meeting. No. no, but I would like to have one on. I would like to have a meeting, a commission meeting on wastewater. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important, and I think it needs to come before the public meetings. Mm -hmm. Do you want? Do you want to have one in July? The latter part of July. So two two July meetings, we could. Oh uh, well, we can't do it the last week in July. And then we could look at something in August and maybe early September for the two public meetings. Mm -hmm. um, our our presentation on the um, is on the fifteenth, right? right? That's correct. So you can't do it on the 29th? Correct. So we could potentially schedule it on the 22nd if we can get it. We have enough people that are interested in coming. Well, the three we need really are the three that Don't weren't, come to those other meetings. weren't on the subcommittee. Right. Uh, uh, yes. Well, that would be me and Gary me. and you. No. Gary's on it? Gary's, Gary is on the committee. So it's uh, MJ Rowe. And Pat. Well, or are you having another subcommittee meeting? Uh, no, we, we You're haven't seen the need for work. that. I think we can deal with this now as a commission okay. instead of a subcommittee. How long do you think the summary or discussion would go? Uh, a couple of hours. So we don't it's want to do it on the, on the 15th? No, it's a very substantial meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, I would really like to see that we have it. Mm -hmm. So, is it, um, so are we heading towards the 22nd? That works? Well, that's a possibility. I think we need to make you, make sure you and I and then Jake and them. Yeah, so the 22nd is okay for me. It's okay for me too. Earlier in the month is not good. So so that's, does it look like the 22nd is okay for you folks? Yeah. So, well, is this strictly for our benefit? So, is it necessary to have it this time of day? Is there any option to have it as part of the, uh, during, uh, you know, uh, earlier in the day? Good. I mean, if it's going to be a couple of hours, that's all. 
MJ might have trouble getting to right. it right. because right. of work. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, she can maybe do early in the morning, but I know she's not going to. Do you want to pull uh, for uh, availability of times during that day? And we can check with Kleinfelder also what their availability is. Yeah, well, let's, course, let's, let's talk the about the Klein, Kleinfelder yeah. piece. I'm, I'm not convinced they need to be here for the, for the commission. Okay. Well, that's not to make it easier. I, so, I mean, I, I'd be interested in seeing what you folks think about that. But, um. and, and are there executive summaries that we would have to read before we came to the meeting? that you guys have put together or that are there? The executive summary right now is really the capital plan mm -hmm. and the projects that were prioritized and, and put in and looked at as far as what fiscal year they could happen and the cost of it. I'm just thinking that it would facilitate that meeting if we had some homework that we did before well, we be came. helpful to me because I really feel like I'm I seem to recall some summary sections at the beginning of reports. I'm, I'm vague on it. I don't know that they did it for every volume. Is this the one? I'm, I'm sorry, to, but like two years ago, I got I, have, I had a bunch of um, uh, we had CDs that we were um, there were CD we got some a report and there were CDs and there was also it was on the website. But this is different from that. I, I can't remember. That I'm not sure if you were looking at draft reports or completed reports when those right. were distributed to you. Yeah. I don't, I, I can't tell you. Because it was like, I think it was 18 months ago at least. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the question is that um, there was a lot of work. There were many tasks leading up to sort of the end task, which was the capital improvement plan recommendations. Um, it may not be necessary to cover all the ground leading up to the end, because I think when you get to the end, they identify the projects that are, that are needed and sort of prioritize, and there were alternatives that were looked at to solve those problems. I think you can safely jump to the end. And, and understand, you don't need to understand how they got to this point. So I, I didn't, I wasn't involved in the, in the call with mm -hmm. Dave, but I think we could present, like we did to the subcommittee, the information that capital improvement plan in terms of the projects and things, and describe a little bit about what they are and how we got to the point of saying that these are the things that are needed. The main focus is that the at the wastewater plant, and those things are, some of them are pretty easy to understand. Some of the other projects, you know, we had more of a discussion about in terms of the price, and do we really need to do it, and, and those sorts of things. So, um, I'm not sure if Dave Peterson from Kleinfeld came in, what, what, he, what he was suggesting be presented, because we could almost redo the last subcommittee meeting with everybody, and give people that, that draft of the, mm -hmm the CIP to say, you know, these are the projects and this is the need, the ways to solve those problems and what the costs are. Were there minutes taken at that meeting? No. Not, not in detail. Okay. Not in detail. Well, I was I, just thinking something that we could mm -hmm. look at first to facilitate that meeting. I think um, the other piece I'd, I'd like to include is at least a, a listing of the tasks <coughs> in not the, not the detail of the work that was done, but I think the commission needs to understand the breadth of the investigation mm -hmm. that, was, that was undertaken. Um, and then there were, between the consultant staff and the, our subcommittee, we reached certain c conclusions about which projects to advance and which ones we felt we couldn't afford to advance. Right. And I think Having an understanding of what we decided not to advance is, is as important as understanding what we decided to push mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. And so we've we sort of backburnered collection system work for the most part because of the need to focus on the treatment plant. But but we, we need to have an understanding that there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the collection system, for example. So right, and that really shows up in the 20-year plan. 
in the 20 year plan. So it's fine with me if you want to bring in the consultant. I mean, I'm not opposed to that. It just, uh, if, and if that provides some structure that, that takes something off your plate because they have the assignment to do the presentation, then that's fine. I mean, that would be a justification. Yeah, yeah. I think the delay in the collection system work is probably a pretty important point. Yeah. So, yeah, something to talk about and, and be aware of. Well, we have some very significant needs, and well, the other just come up, we're getting into the detail, but we're, we're stuck between limited financing and the approach that we'd really like to take if, if financing weren't mm -hmm. controlling the process. Well, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm agreeing, I think that uh, Anything that we can, if, if, the, if the consultant can provide us with, uh, with a summary, that'll be fine as well. I mean, I trust the fact that uh, you guys have been so attentive to this and familiar with it to be able to help those of us who haven't uh, mm -hmm. understand it in a way that is probably going to give us a pretty uh, good uh, idea of the, of the, the overall issue. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. So we'll check on the dates, mm -hmm. the date, and then look to see what we have for information to make it available for you before, so you've got something to read um, to try to bring yourself up to speed a little bit before they come in. Even if it's just bullet <coughs> points that are you know, providing a high, highlights of the of what has been, uh, what the progress has been, I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't need to have it uh, be volumes of things to read, which would probably uh, make as much sense to me beforehand as it will after the explanation anyway. I didn't want to burden the staff with making up the summary, but if we've already decided that the consultant might be coming to the meeting anyway, if we could have consultant time to give us something so that we're not, um, I for one would like to have something to look mm -hmm. at before I come. We can do it. You have enough direction? You're not a burden. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but. I think so. We can come up with something. Okay. Okay, good. Excellent. So I would just emphasize when you, eat, whoever sends out the information, that Pat and I know that we need to be there and just emphasize to MJ that, she, that it would be good for her to be there too. Yeah, but it has to be at a regular meeting hour, then that's fine for her. Because I'm not just, I'm just okay. something that wasn't, you know, public that I'm thinking, well, you know, it's going to be two hours during the day. It might be easier for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> We're still aiming at July 22nd. Right. I think so. Yep. That's what I just marked mm -hmm. on the calendar here. So. If, if, as far as I'm concerned, if it, if it needs to go into August, it's, it's okay with me. That's right, too. I don't know how that works stuck. for you, though. It's only the last week in July that I'm going to get August. Here's well, one week in August. First one. Yeah, the second week in August is not good for me. And then we'll just send a doodle poll out with a whole bunch of dates. Because, yeah, have to stop in there. Because that's kind of fun. <laughs> it was fun too. the first ten times. <laughs> <laughs> the last two times, not so much. Yeah, the 5th or the 19th of August would both be okay for me, as it turns out. I don't think I can do that. Oh, I guess Is the meeting over? It is. No. <laughs> We've been dragging our feet. You, you waited until I got here. No, just been going slowly. Okay. Sorry, man. Talking about the uh, comprehensive wastewater management plan mm -hmm. and uh, the need to present it to the full commission, and in particular the three members that weren't on the subcommittee. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at a special meeting on July 22nd. It's our first choice in the to do that. Works for me. <coughs> okay on this item? Mm -hmm. Next item is the water asset management plan presentation, which we've already mentioned is scheduled for July 15th. Right. It will be at JFK at 530. It will be recorded by NCTD. 
Well, you have to record it yourself. Right. It's <laughs> kind of the same recording as we do here. Okay. But the question is, what do you want in advance for that particular meeting? Do you want a hard copy of the report? We can give it to you electronically as a PDF file. I just need to know. Maybe some of you have had the plan still at your home that you read. I think I do. The, the, the whole thing? The whole report? Yes. Mm -hmm. I actually have a copy. I don't have any page. Does everybody get a copy of it? The Tate and Howard report, the water asset report? Maybe. Perhaps. Uh, let me look first before now, you. Uh, please contact me and I can I can get you what you need, whether it be a hard right. copy or a What's the date copy. again? Uh, the 15th. July 15th. And you agreed to do it then? Yeah. The mayor requested um, that we move the vice to a bigger order. venue. Got it. Oh, you I believe the vice chairman could get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. Well, okay. So, uh, ch so check for copies of the uh, plan. Right, and let me know. It'll take a little bit. If you want a hard copy, it might take a little bit to get together. Did you have electronic? We do. And is it on the website? No. No. Okay. And is there some thought of advertising this so the public knows? It's a regularly scheduled board meeting. Um, but it's in a different location. I can talk to the mayor about that, see if he wants to do something on the city webpage also. Well, since we're holding it in a venue that's large enough to accommodate people, there's, I, it sounds like there's an expectation that we want someone to come. <laughs> Otherwise, we have it here. Right, right. So, yeah, I think it would be nice to have some kind of... Okay. Announcement. I mean, this is this is e at, as important as the wastewater work, mm -hmm. and it has a big impact on future projects and rates. And any more on this issue? If not, we can move on to the Pulaski Park update. Someone from staff? Someone from staff. The project is out to bid right now, and um, we're going to open up bids to the end of June. One of the days. Um, June 29th is the bid opening for that, so we're looking at possibly breaking ground the latter part of July. And we're preparing a state park grant application for the overlook, this phase two of the project we're working on right now. And that grant's due in a couple of weeks. So things are moving along. Excellent. Yeah, it's good. Uh, I think everyone will be fascinated to see that come together. Yeah. Any comments on this? Uh, just curious, if, so if we're applying for a grant for the overlook, which is the south side of the thing, that wouldn't, that wouldn't roll into this project. It wouldn't come fast enough. So yeah. it's just like next a second year. construction contract. So it's sort of a break point at the top of the slope there. So that would potentially happen next summer if we get the money? Right. Yeah. Great. Anything else on the side? Next item is private ways. Uh, just just an update on it. Uh, the city solicitor has all the private ways that were approved by the planning board and the board of public works, prior board of public works, uh, to go to city council. Uh, the likes of there's nine left out of the 35 that we looked at. So hopefully in the next month or two, this whole process will be done and over with. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Gary might be sad because he's been so many years. Uh, kind of like a career. I'm going to miss all those weekends driving around Saturday in freezing cold, drizzly weather. You miss the chocolate. Yeah. The chocolate for that. Once. Once. Well, I only took that one time. We don't know what happened before we ever were participating. That's right. That's right. He and two people not here. But there were no chocolate croissants. Oh. <coughs> um, uh, and then the contract update. And we have a copy of that in front of yeah, us. Yeah, you have a list of contracts in front of you. The first one, the Toro Groundmaster, was a capital improvements project from last fiscal year that gave um, 
up to $100,000 per purchase of equipment, especially a large mower for Florence Fields. So we obtained that through a state contract for $82,000. The next project is the industrial park interceptor that I believe was funded in FY14. Um, this is Kleinfelder providing resident uh, um, project for representation out in the field. Uh, we don't have enough people in engineering to oversee the project, so we hired Kleinfelder. They designed the project to oversee the uh, the actual construction of it. So there's a, there's a little bit of overlap there because we had previously approved a, a contract with Bob Nelson to do the inspection on that. Mm -hmm. Bob's wrapping up this Pine Street water main job that's been going since the spring, and when he breaks free from Pine Street, then he's going to go back over and cover the industrial park. So there's a, there's a little window here where we need coverage, so Kleinfeld is going to provide um, an engineer until Bob becomes available to cover the inspection on that. So yeah. we've got a little more flexibility to cover everything this way. Okay. Uh, the next one is AECOM for the Leopard Repair Connecticut and Mill River Engineering Assessment. We had a meeting with them uh, the other day. Uh, if you want to go through it, basically it's looking at um, existing conditions assessment, inspection of all tow drains, and the assessment of impacts of that, uh, inspection of levee penetrations and encroachments with the assessments of those impacts, uh, review of the freeboard elevations, which is the top of the, the levee itself, and then uh, preparing some te uh, technical memo to the city, and uh, final to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And also looks at the West Street pump station, does a risk analysis of uh, its capacity and the fuel types and preparing a technical memo on that. I don't know if you recall, there's a small pump station off of Route 66 for uh, pumping out the drain system, the stormwater system, when the Mill River gets too high. Uh, the other thing they're looking at, they're doing a dam inspection of the South Street drop structure, a phase one dam assessment. Underneath the South Street bridge, there's an actual drop structure there as part of the Army Corps project. And we had it inspected about four and a half years ago for phase one, and this kind of ties the times together of having this done. And I, I think this fall the phase one was due anyway, so kind of cutting uh, two birds with one stone here with that. And then we have the uh, review at the old Springfield Road Bridge, the old Oxbow Bridge down there, and whether or not those concrete abutments could pose a hazard of flooding conditions down there. Um, and then um, technical reports coming back to the City Army Corps of Engineers. So like I said, we're, we're looking at expending money out of the flood control at this point. Um, we got actually a couple, a number of projects on this, flood control and stormwater. So we had, uh, we had issued a request for proposals for this in case you're wondering how we, how we got to AECOM. Actually, I don't have all my, all my notes here, but we, uh, my recollection is right. We, Proposals from GZA, Geo Environmental, Flying Fogger, Sand, and AECOM. Um, they were all, all qualified to do the work. Um, AECOM was just slightly more expensive than GZA, but they, we felt like they had a, a better, more complete proposal. Mm -hmm. And we ended up, uh, it was Ned, myself, and Ann Prevere that reviewed all the proposals and made, made a selection. So we picked uh, AECOM to help with this particular project. And is their work product going to be recommending future work? Is that the fulfilling Corps of Engineers analysis requirements? Or I'm hoping for no future work. Mm -hmm. Future work. Um, Got it. Most of it, most of it is, um, it's basically related to documentation and certification of things um, related to our current, related to the current condition of the levy system. And um, so the core, the core wants, for example, if they were, they want certification that the tow drains are functioning, sort of part of the original facility. They want to make sure that they work. And then other things have happened since the since the flood control system was installed: sewer lines under the levee, water lines under the levee, different telephone poles penetrating the levee or in the vicinity of the levee. Um, so the anything that's sort of a changed condition from the day that it was built. The Corps wants these things to be analyzed and someone to certify in a technical mem memorandum that they looked at them and that they don't have any adverse impact on the, on the levy itself. So a lot of these things are just certifying the current condition of the levy. 
Um, we're not anticipating a lot of work coming out of it. Um, one one element is, is certifying the top, what the current crown elevation of the levee is. So we, we had a separate survey done that will facilitate that analysis. But we're not expecting a lot of work to come out of this unless we find that the tow train has failed and it doesn't work or there's some other some other thing that comes out. But most of it seems like it's um, fairly straightforward. I'm not anticipating a lot coming out of it. Does this address all our obligations other than the main flood pump station? It does. Has the uh, elevation of the crown changed? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I, I don't know. I think the the, the levee was built in the in around 1940, mm -hmm. so it's been there a long time. The, the subsoils are clay to a great depth. It's possible that settlement and consolidation of the underlying mm -hmm. material caused the, some settlement of the levee, so we may have lost some may have lost some height there, I don't really know. And then just on the top, it's a, the, the Connecticut River levee in, in particular is a very popular recreational area. People love to walk up and down there. So like the crown, which used to be a crown, is now like a long divot. So it's a concave uh, crown. It's a concave crown. And part of the project we have with, um, we have, we're doing a vegetation removal contract on the Connecticut River levee. Part of that contract involves reconstructing the crown. So we're going to add whatever it is necessary to get back to the pitch on the original design. So we might be adding four or five, six inches of material maybe to get that positive crown back on the Connecticut River levee. So it's hard to say, David. Don't really know. Okay. Uh, next one is the King Street Brook hydraulic analysis with CDM Smith. This was a letter proposal from uh, CDM to us, and they're looking at doing a couple of items here. The first one is a topographic survey of the areas in the vicinity of the North Rail Trail, and um, uh, and spot grades in seven locations along the Barrett Street Marsh and getting the image of culverts and discharge points along the Connecticut River. The second part of it is a hydraulic study and alternatives evaluation. And they're basically looking at a hydraulic study of the King Street Brook from the rail trail to the discharge point of the Connecticut River and to limit the areas and the tributaries to the King Street Brook. The modeling will be done with that. And um, the basically what they're looking at, they're trying to determine the hydraulics of the marsh and the water levels if the weird upstream of the bear tree culverts is removed and the two large beaver dams are removed, how that's all going to flow. Uh, there'll be included wetland resource delimination and stream channel data collection, and they finally preparing a feasibility report out of that. So the focus of the focus of this particular study is increasing drainage through the rail trail. So we had um, we had a, a small hydraulic analysis uh, that was done last year that showed that. Um, that box culvert under the rail trail is undersized and will handle like a five year or ten year storm or something. It's pretty small, so we want more capacity through there. So, if we're going to push more water under the bike path, we need to know where it's going to go and the capacity of the, the marshy that is stored or to convey it all the way through the system onto the Connecticut. So, we're looking at alternatives to increase the flow capacity under the rail trail there and then what the impacts are. So, it involves wetlands delineations and other assessment of impacts so we can uh, determine what the best alternative is to uh, prevent flooding in that area. So it's really the focus of it. Okay. Uh, the next one is the Connecticut River Levee Repair Route 5 Army Corps of Engineers Levee Encroachment. This work is being done by Ty and Bond. Uh, they're basically looking at uh, with the roundabout construction coming up and any features attached to that, they're looking at the encroachments and the penetrations that will happen. We, we need to go through the uh, stop log sheeting, uh, the steel sheeting with the water main. So they're going to look at that. Um, they're also going to look at abandoning the existing water line in the vicinity of the Route 5, whether or not that causes any issues. There's uh, hydrant installations in the vicinity of Route 5 that are proposed as part of the water main. They also have encroachments into the, the flood control system. And um, uh, guardrails installations too as part of the roundabout construction. 
So basically, it's a letter report to the, the Army Corps of Engineers that documents all these and their professional uh, uh, report as to what they believe could affect the storm system, the flood control system, or not. Mm -hmm. The next one is Warner Street sewer replacement. Um, this sewer line is collapsing up there, and we kind of did it as an emergency contract. Uh, Time Bob did the um, design work, and currently Ludlow Construction was the low bidder for construction. I don't know the schedule that's going to start, but I assume it's almost any time soon. As soon as the contract is signed. I don't know. Has it been signed? I don't know. It's starting soon. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's been signed. Okay. Next one is Pulaski Park Electrical Utilities Engineering Design. This is for designing the underground and overhead power and communication lines that are going through the park. Um, and also to get them to, uh, what happens, you have overhead lines that come through the back end of the park and they drop down into the wrong house lot. Through a grant we received a couple of years ago, we actually installed some duct banks and uh, some utility boxes underground. And so this is taking, furthering that design to put everything underground and continue down over the hillside to get power to the roundhouse building itself. Um, I was talking to Jim about it today, and there will be another contract coming up with Kleinfelder that will do the civil site design work. This is strictly the engineering design for those communication lines that it's called. So, uh, that will be a separate construction project and not part of the Pulaski Park construction project. Just so you're aware but of that. But taking place at the same time? They could be shared contractors on site. Mm -hmm. The next one is Pulaski Park Construction Administration Services with Stimson Associates. This covers phases one and two. So they're broken out. I, I don't have the dollar values in front. Yes, I do. Excuse me. Uh, the phase one work was roughly $44,000, and the phase two work was roughly $28,000. And then there are some um, deliverables and um, reimbursements that came up to about um, $2,200 for the total of the 75000 So is it correct to assume they don't, do not provide on-site supervision of the construction for this assignment? They have very limited uh, hours for inspections, so periodic inspections are, are scheduled. Okay. Is there a plan to provide additional inspection? We're trying to, yes, I guess the answer is yes. <laughs> That's great news, thank you. We want to, we want to, we want to cover it with staff and um, okay. with our transportation engineer leaving, we're short staff, so um, it's creating a, a little bit of a pinch in terms of coverage on jobs, but um, the plan is to have additional coverage out there in addition to Simpson's uh, staff people. Okay. Next one is our annual paving contract uh, for, um, and it was awarded to Warner Brothers as a little bidder. I believe we had three bidders this year on this, and basically we're milling and overlaying 13 streets, and we are doing overlays on two additional streets, and then we are reclaiming two streets also. So the, um, this is being paid out of Chapter 90 and capital improvements money. The City Council approved the uh, FY16 capital plan, which had another $500,000 dedicated to street resurfacing. Mm -hmm. Great news. Did Warner Brothers have the contract in FY15? Last year, they did. I think we're pleased they got the contract because we're used to working with the crews and everything is, I think it's been going pretty well with them. So mm -hmm. I know Dave Lotto was happy that they were well. So I don't know if anyone's been out on Reservoir or Chesterfield Road, but we did the cold in place recycling out there. It still is going to get an inch and a half overlay, but it came out pretty well. It's smooth again. Yeah. It's smooth. Yeah. It's very nice. I, I, will there be a schedule? Is somebody going to issue a schedule? What streets go first? Are they going to develop that, or is that something you guys are going to? They need to submit a schedule to us once the contract's gone completely around. It hasn't been signed from downtown that I'm aware of yet. Yeah. And the idea is to get all this work done by probably September. end of October. 
early November. They'll, they'll be working the and, whole season. I mean, we always look at kind of Thanksgiving is kind of plant shutdown time right. or thereabouts. Right, but they have enough work where it's going to go that far. Right, but I'm, I'm not sure. Does this contract actually go into June next year? I don't recall. I don't know what the contract is. Okay. It's a large contract, and yeah. then I don't know what the duration of it is. I think last year when we went out to bid, we gave them the window to come back out in the spring to do to do other work because it just becomes impossible to get everything done. Yeah. So they'll be starting in you know, whatever July. So, so what can they get one? Can they get one point five million dollars worth of paving down right. between July and I'm beginning pretty November? Sure it's till next year. Yeah, it's next spring too. Yeah. So what they're doing on Bridge Street right now is left over from last year, right? That, that's gotcha. a mass DOT project. Oh. But it was left over from last year? No. No. Bridge Road was left over from last year. Bridge Street is the DOT project. All right. If you want the list of streets, it's on our website. Um, under yeah. engineering projects, you can see the whole uh, the list. You gave it. Yeah. 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 David came and talked to us. We've been posting on the, the on the mayor's on the on the city main website every week a list of um, construction projects that are going on in town. So if people want to avoid where all the digging is and that sort of thing, they'll get an update. Or if they live in the vicinity of a project, they can get, get an update on where the project stands. So David Villette has been sort of going around, getting an update from all the different engineers on which projects are aware and what they're doing, and then putting that up on the website. So we're, we're trying to communicate with people in terms of the road shutdowns and other things. And that's on the city website or is it the DPW? It's on the main website. Just click on the main website. And Usually one of the first things there under the group under the city news. Okay. 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 Next is uh, uniform rentals for the year from Sintas. Um, this is a, um, it's not a state contract, but it's very similar to it. It's with, um, I don't remember the name of the community. It's like Har Harford. Hartford community Hart in Maryland, isn't it? That might be it. Yeah. So it's one of these purchase agencies that anybody can join into, and this fellows can go to. And we look for ones that have good prices. So we're back with census again. Um, the next three are all uh, wastewater treatment plant uh, chemicals for the year. The first two are for odor control. Excuse me. Yeah, the first two are for odor control, and the last one is for disinfection. Any questions regarding the contracts that we haven't covered already? Thank you for doing this. No problem. Sorry. BJ does most of the work on it. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> Thank you, BJ. You're welcome, Jim. Uh, that completes the agenda. We can go around the table and see if we have anything else we can bring up. Starting with you, Gary? No. Okay. To Richard's question on the, um, just so that I have a better understanding of it as well, on the Mill River uh, being used as, as the source for determining the, uh, the water ban, could you explain for me um, how that, uh, uh, why that's the standard that is used and what the reason for it being rather than, I would think, the level of the reservoirs or something like that? Um, what I recall, and Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, is that the Mill River Basin is a medium stress basin, and Northampton is located in that basin. Even though we have a inner basin transfer for our water, we still have two water wells, groundwater wells, that are in the, in this basin. It's part of our water management permit we have from the state, and they dictate that to us. As opposed to other surrounding communities. I know Southampton just put a restriction on their water. This is not a water ban; it's a water restriction. Right? I guess um, it's part of our permit to withdraw water. It, at one point, I understood, and, and maybe they can elaborate on this, that we were uh, one of the early communities to get a state permit with this kind of restriction, and that as other communities had their permits renewed, they, they'd likely have a similar condition in their permits. But I don't know if that's actually the way it's planned out. 
Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not really sure. I think they're five year they're five year permits, the water management act permits, so I think we were ahead of the curve in terms of when we get ours compared to neighboring communities. But um, so we're this is five years now that we're yeah. is it five years in a row or five out of six years that we've had a so like about five years. I forget, I forget exactly when yeah. the last permit came, but I mean that's right. It's a con it's a condition of the permit. Um, it's a fairly sensitive um, it's a fairly sensitive predictor of of uh, water shortage, um, as people have noticed. But it's dictated to us by by the state. And I, I know some residents of the state have called DEP um, because they, they wonder why. Uh, it is a little puzzling to people, I mean, especially in the, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, it was, and it just seems to be raining day after day after day and, and have a laying in. Say, okay, you still got a water band. It's you know, almost illogical to some people. Yeah, you know, last year we didn't have a band till late in the season because it was really a wet summer. But then the day we had to call the band, we had a huge rainstorm. I remember that. Yeah. True. Yeah. So it's dictated. So it's not a question of calling the band. You're told. You're notified when the level is of is uh, of such a uh, that has, that the band needs to go into effect. It's a restriction on the band. We're not. Uh, we have to monitor the stream. There's a stream gauge on the internet that we have. To, we have to check that stream flow data every day. Mm -hmm. So we we have to we have to monitor the stream level and then the, the flow. It's the flow on the stream. We have to monitor that. And then when it when it's, when it's below the standard in the permit, then we have to call the water restriction and then we have to do many things to get the word out, including notifying DEP that we have. not that call water restriction in accordance with a permit to withdraw water. So, so we'll you know, if this is a topic that's near and dear to a lot of people in the city, it may come up at the meeting on July 15th. If there's questions and answers at the end. So Tate and Howard might have a broader view of what's going on and might be in a position to comment on it. Sure. Yeah, they do a lot of work within the state in different areas, so I'm sure they're familiar with other permits that people have and what they're tied to. Anything else, Brian? Yeah. Good. We got the Red Pine Walk coming up on Monday, June 15th at 5 to 6 30, with a rain date on June 17th at the same time. This is on Chesterfield Road again, at the intersection of Kennedy Road and Sylvester Road. I pass this around if anybody wants to see I it. I sent it to him today. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Can we assume the poison ivy is fully thriving at this moment? <laughs> it is. And the ticks. And the ticks. Oh, the ticks, ticks are horrible. They actually carry the poison ivy horrible. with them. Yeah. Not that I want to discourage anyone from going, but... <laughs> Sounds like fun to me. It's, yeah. it's going to be a blast. <laughs> or a hazard suit. Unless you can do it from pavement. And that's all I have. Jim? BJ? No, I'm good. Okay. okay. You all set? Rob? Okay. And I'm sorry, I apologize a little bit because I wasn't here, but I noticed in the minutes that there was discussion about moving transfer station funding to the general budget next year, possibly. No? That didn't happen. That. It was a conversation I had with the mayor. Okay. We were doing this for FY16 and see what happens. We had to actually some good revenue from the cell tower, mm -hmm. and as the third quarter, we're still still in the black, mm -hmm. um, and we're getting ready to start start selling permits again. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping we'll actually see a positive cash flow at the end of this year. That'd be great. Okay, good. All right, and you'll let us know. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to follow up on that. Um, and there, have, this is sort of a general topic, and and I've not talked about it with anybody. In so it may not be appropriate to talk about it, and I'm fine to be shut down. Um, but there has been some question, you mentioned it, Richard, about um, tech, about um, the new role of the commission. And I love the fact that in July we're going to be talking about um, wastewater management and, um, and, and water asset management. And I'm, I'm just thinking that 
I would like to suggest that maybe one meeting a month, if we stick to the two meetings a month, that there's an educational component to mm -hmm. one of the meetings. I, again, I don't want to put burden on the staff, but but we, I think there are things that the commission can do, and this is a new um, direction that we're going in, and I think that we're only limited by our imaginations. But I mean, it's the idea that that we're feeling our way here, mm -hmm. but I think that there are, if we're educated a little bit more, then that might be something, a direction that we could go. So I'm just throwing that out for people. I, I think that has a lot of merit. The, the caveat is, is we have to be, and you know, we have to be wary of imposing work Probably. on the staff. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's it's a challenge to bring a topic to a meeting mm -hmm. of substance and present it. But um, I can add that um, I met with the mayor last week just for an update and to fill him in on how we thought things were going. And um, we didn't address that issue specifically, but I did point out that it, it seems like there's not, except for the water and the wastewater reports, there's not a lot of substance on our, on our agenda at the moment. Mm -hmm. And that I personally was co concerned about coming up with study topics that just burden the department. Um, right. it, it needs to be useful to the department also. So um, there was no answer that came out of that, but he's, he's aware that we've canceled um, the second meeting in a month for several months in a row because of a lack of substance um, for us to work on. So, uh, all issues that we need to try to sort out as we go forward and it doesn't seem like there's a real clear answer. And some of this, when we start talking about the report that you'll get from the consulting company, that might generate some direction as well mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm, yeah. The staffing topic. report you done? Yeah, yeah, staffing, but that relates to the substance of what the staff is doing. The, the matrix report. Yes, the matrix yeah. report, that's correct. Yeah. One more thing. Sure. Um, she just don't want me to break your record. <laughs> <laughs> You're past that. Um, I just wanted to update about re the recenter that it's been very successful, and I think it's been very successful in terms of people are very excited. We've seen an uptick. I've been there every Saturday, and um, a lot of people coming. What goes out is just amazing to me. What comes in is just amazing to me. I think we're creating, and you know, this goes back to my original concept of community um, uh, relations. I think we we have um, uh, we're generating a lot of goodwill for the city, and so I just want to give that feedback. And I don't know what will happen in the future. It's currently not. Um, big enough really and but the, what the reuse committee is doing is working with um, Salvation Army and Echo Building um, in um, Springfield? Echo Building? Echo is, yeah. yeah. And um, so there, they, did you, were you there on Wednesday or wasn't there on Wednesday? I was, no, I wasn't. So they're arranging that they're going to come on a regular basis because we're getting so much stuff and so that stuff is not going into the landfill. So, I mean, it's, so you watch what people put into those tubs, and it's like there's a lot of junk that goes in. And I know we don't care about that anymore because we don't have a landfill, but I do care about that. So, just throwing that out. So, I guess we're glad that it's still in the um, line items. But that won't operate all year round, though. Is that correct? No, it shut down probably late November, in November. It's I notice they're using outdoor storage for a lot of the stuff. Just yeah. And it's it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Not that the end of it's heated. Right. Right. It doesn't doesn't temperature wise, but when the snow comes it'll be hard to find the stuff outdoors. Okay. All right, I don't have anything else. Do you so care? I, I did take advantage of the whatever it was large plastic recycling. Oh, rigid. rigid uh, yes, because Saturday. for everybody's um, discussion, we're having we continue having those major events because of 
It was a lot of people. It was a lot of stuff that people were getting rid of, and I was, it was nice to get, have a place to put it. Reach it fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's once a year? Yes. Okay. It might be in the fall. I think it I remember I have to take the schedule. I can look at the schedule to answer that question accurately. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt, one last one. Motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. We are adjourned.